Every single thing we have waited for every single day, every single night you have watched Haunted Southeast Asia is all going to accumulate to just today and this Sunday we are watching RNG Sports vs New Illusion MR in the cycle for finals of Haunted Southeast Asia G League cycle for and yes it's, it is the final cycle here today and we are just looking at both of these cream of the crop team just face off with each other in the best of five the winner will have themselves um, crown champion of cycle four the loser will be second place so very easy stuff that's happening here today and more importantly sir because both of these teams orange and MRR they have substantial points to warrant themselves an automated spot in the finals and that's the haunted grand finals that's gonna happen in January next year this is Babel joining me today is also myself because my good friend Lark has decided to uh, bail out on me last minute he's gonna be back real soon but don't worry about that because uh, solo cast not that bad hope you guys still enjoy this as much as I will that said the game is now already well underway so I'm gonna show you guys the lobby as soon as I can there we go and on the Legion team we have Orange Esports help on site in the Illusion MRR Indeed, it's going to be a clash of the nation coming from both teams and both sides. Uh, a lot of increased rebellion. I know all of you, the first thing is going to ask is that why the hell is it that most of the members from Orange Sports have a different clan tag? And I did a little bit of research on myself, uh, from myself and I w finally I got the answer that they have decided a smaller rebellion and it's going to join AD and gamers. <laughs> but nothing too much to worry about because they're still going to be the Orange Sports squad. And it's not a sign of uh, too much problems or rather, or rather troubles to come. That said, we're going to be looking at a pretty clean lineup here. So it's good to see that both sides don't have any ringers. This is the standard kind of a lineup from both sides. WTF rejoining his squad here for the uh, final here. And it's pretty good to see that. And just really keen for some good action. A lot of predictions on the ground already saying that Orange Esports is going to have a really good time up against MR. MR being a, you know, a team that they beat a lot of times in different cycles. They have a lot of experience with each other. Yes, I'll give you that. But MR, man, they are renowned to just nicely shine in the playoffs. And a little bit of revisit into the previous cycle. Cycle 3 finals was also these two teams. And we had uh, we had Orange Esports winning them 3-0. So I'm calling it a 3-1. In favor of Orange Esports because I, I just am very, very much amazed by the way this current squad of Orange Esports play. You have Kido rejoining the squad, you've got WTF here as well. They are just looking so good. Whereas, uh, not to discard MR, but MR has got a very good strategy going on. And I think that they have learned from their lesson in Cycle 3, so they may snatch away one game. But can they snatch away the whole uh, series? That's gonna be a little bit of a tall order uh, for MR's part, but it's definitely gonna be possible. So I want to see if that's going to be happening here today. That's it. Now we're going to go through the banned heroes first. We have Tempest, Sanriv, Ophelia, Revenor all nicely banned out. And it's interesting to see the Color X banned on both Sanriv and Revenor. Revenor very strong hero, I think, on Kido. But because the Bubbles is still alive, I think the Bubbles is going to get picked there as well. That said, I'm spot on because we have on the Legion team, MOA, Keeper of Force, and a Bubbles being picked up. Yeah, Keeper definitely going to the Suicide, Keeper of the Suicide happening there. And MOA is definitely going to be looking at that mid lane support as well. We got bubbles in the mid lane, that's gonna be uh, played by Kido if I'm not wrong. And on the help on team, you got a standard MR War Beast coming in. The War Beast that won them both games against Turtle Masters yesterday. And also significant success against uh, S2Y. Definitely wanna see how this is really gonna you know work out here in general. We also got Pestilence be picked up, Ratchet as well. Standard tie team kind of a situation on the help on team. So nothing too uh, to fancy food that's happening just yet. War base, very good early game aggression. You also got Pestilence. Pestilence does crazily well in the early stages of any game. Mid lane, draw proc, uh, proc is just insane. You also have that rush attack that could really carry this team. So it's going to be a little bit of a dual carry coming from the Hellbound team. Because for the Legion side, it is still, I mean, it's going to be okay. But in general, it, you know, you just like a little bit of the early game aggression, but you got in exchange a lot of insane luck down there you got bubbles cap fill you have the root as well pretty good stunts what i want to see is that both sides have not addressed a real uh well for the help on team they've got most of their car core heroes settled already so they haven't got the support there and it's not gonna be too much trouble i think legion team would be more inclined to ban out the support and yep it's correct they're gonna ban out the fate and the luna yep both of which are fantastic gankers and stunners there. Bullshark being banned, not really sure what the hell's happening there because there's no way they want to pick a Bullshark in this kind of situation. Uh, we know when you got a Pasty, a war base, a Rachetic already, so that could not be one of the uh, heroes that is on the minor MRR. That said, we have the Pebbles, Kraken Scout being banned up by Team Hellbound. All spot on because Pebbles very nicely played in mid lane. Um, kudos to be playing a carry. Uh, definitely WTF can play a, the 
pebbles uh, if he's going to carry. But double TF is renowned for the kind of hero that, you know, you just play a lot more in terms of farm. So they didn't bang out the Dark Lady, they didn't ban out the heroes such as a Draconis. And also, I know Sandriff has been addressed a way long time ago, so nothing to worry about that one there. But in general, you still got a lot of other heroes that you could really play, the Predator as well. All of which WTF uh, can farm very comfortably. And that's one of the main reasons why you ban those heroes up. But nope, they're gonna ban our Kraken and Scout instead. Kraken and Scout, Scout's very viable, I'll give you that. But Scout, with a Keeper, you don't see the Keeper. Unless Keeper only goes to the short lane, Scout going to the long lane, it is very highly improbable so. Simply because I don't see how um, Double TF is going to be playing as the Keeper in this game. Of course, you can also lane him mid, but then where do you put bubbles? So, the ban heroes from Color X is a little bit off, if you ask me. Uh, in general, that's going to allow a lot of different heroes that Team Legion can really play. And, yep, so I think the Orange Sports right now are just uh, thinking, sizing it up really nicely as to what kind of heroes they want to lane up well. Pandemonium. It's going to be a Pandemonium. Pandemonium uh, will be played by Ann Kindler, and I think it's going to be a Suicide Pandemonium. We'll see Keeper in the jungle in that kind of situation, which has been a really long time since I've ever seen Keeper go back to his roots, uh, the forest there. And yeah, I know it's Pandya again, but uh, Keeper, man, Keeper always see him in the suicide, never really see him in the jungle because he just does so much well in the suicide compared to the jungle. And you want to give him a quick level 6, that's going to be the lane to throw him to. Also, because he does have uh, Nature's Veil, one of the main reasons why he is very survival. Um, based and it's one of the main reasons why you put it there as well. That's a Witchless standard pickup again coming up from MRR's team. Uh, I think that if Mr. Ghost didn't ban out the Bushwhack, he should have banned out Witchless instead, seeing how MR played a lot of uh, Witchless yesterday and had a considerable amount of success there as well. I'm thinking that now because they saw the Pandemonium, they are going to want to go for the Parasite. Parasite's going to be a pretty good kind of hero to just lock down the Keeper in the jungle. Because Parasite is not bang banned by the way, just like I know. But again, I, I guess that a wall so is a little bit too much. You already have a war beast there, you don't need a wall so it's just too greedy. Whereas for the Legion team, yep, they still don't have the hard carry. If it's gonna be a Dr. Repulsor, uh, it's gonna be pretty questionable as to what really WTF is gonna play. Dr. Repulsor can be the hard carry, I mean, it can also go to the mid lane there. Um, Still, the only thing that I really like about Orange G-Spot is the fact that they are also flexible and uh, a lot of stuff can happen there. In general, Shrey can be playing as the Pandemonium because Pandemonium, uh, we've seen it play before, really great ganking skills coming up from Shrey. So, it's uh, it's a lineup that is just very, very viable and uh, just fluid and flexible, whatever you call it. Very good stuff happening there. But across the board, I'm expecting... There we go. I'm expecting uh, Shrey Pandemonium and I'm expecting also... Kido is no way he's playing the Keeper. That's That's just not correct. It could be a so, some switch there, but if it's playing Keeper, then Orange is supposed taking a really huge gamble in the first game. And I mean, it's just game one out of five. What's what's the big deal here? So I think that they are going to change things around a little bit. There we go. Yeah, this is a lineup that is a little bit more fluid. In a sense where they're deciding, and they decided that Shay has played the jungle role a lot more and a lot better than Keto. And giving it a pandemonium. So, I mean, it's good. We have seen three different members on Orange Swap play pandemonium before. Um, we have seen Enkindler, that's Cipher, by the way, Let's Kiddo, as well as Shui. All three of them, fantastic job on the pandemonium. Uh, Enkindler, big place as well. Kiddo is just a guy that's insane. You don't give him the mid lane. The moment he hits in the mid lane, he's just going to steamroll very easily. That's same, man, ladies and gentlemen. Game one going to begin right here, right now on Epic Gaming Television. It's going to be between RNG Sports and MRR. This is going to be the cycle for champions for all of you guys out there. A really big game that's going to happen here. And it's, we're going to crown ourselves a nice cycle for champion. Uh, just a little bit of a extra insight that's happening here before we go into this game. And that is the fact that I'm doing a little bit of solo cast for you guys to just join up here. Uh, I hope you guys will still be able to enjoy that. And also the fact that, uh, a fun fact guys, is that MRR has appeared in four cycles, uh, all four playoffs. Cycle 1 through 4, but has never won a single cycle before. Orange Sports just won themselves cycle 3. Orange Sports also appeared in four different uh, playoffs. And the only one that they won was cycle 3. So if they win today's championship, they are able to be, you know, pride... Pride's all the line, you know, you can just nicely say that they've won cycle twice. And it's cycle 3 and cycle 4, so they are very good. And they will also smash MR's face down to the ground, because MR will be the only team out of all the teams that have been in the playoff uh, so many times that, that didn't win a cycle. Um, Turtle Master's been in, in the playoff for, I think, uh, twice, thrice? Uh, let me just think about it. One, one, two... Yep, I think they have been in the playoff thrice. They have won one, that's cycle 1, Turtle Masters. 
Um, Cycle 2 went to S2Y. S2Y themselves, pretty good. Also entered into three different uh, playoff. MR and Orange Esports, the only two teams that entered the playoff four times in a row. Uh, in and that's four out of four playoff appearance here. So both of these teams got to be really good. And MR, man, every single time, they made sure that they are close to the finishing line. The first cycle was them up against Turtle Masters, all the way up in uh, the finals. The second cycle, we had S2Y against, uh, who's the other one? I think it's Orange Esports, yeah. Or S2Y versus Orange Esports in the finals. And then the third one, it's uh, questionable again, because the third one, you have MR again here. And today, MR is here again. So MR, man, they are just always ranking to go in. They just steamroll so hard in the playoff first day. But the problem with MR is that it can never reach the second day and claim it victory. So I hope to see a trend change here for MR. And all the best to our Thai friends there. That's it. Made the best team win. And on Legion side, we got Orange Spots all the way from Malaysia. And Mr. Ghost Top Troll going to be the drafter today. He will be the MOA. Muscle Arms, the guy with bow and arrow instead. Back to Primal Instincts there. Really good to see that as well. We got a fat... Polar Bear jumping all about, and that's gonna be Kiddo, not sure you this game, it's gonna be Kiddo, and really interesting to see what kind of gameplay it's gonna offer us, excited as well, WTF playing as the carry Dr. Repulsor, now this is going to be refreshing, never really seen him play Dr. Repulsor before, wanna see how he's gonna be able to deal in this kind of situation, and more importantly, if he's gonna go for the Light Brand farm first, that's gonna be good to see. Next, we got Ankiller playing Suicide. If I'm not wrong, it's going to be a Bubbles. Uh, may not be the mid lane Annihilation Kido Bubbles, but it's still going to be a very good Bubbles. We've seen him play in this role a lot of time before, and I'm just keen to see what kind of uh, stuff he can offer us today. And Las Vinales, man, the king of the jungle. Shui from Orange Esports um, of Southeast Asia, of course. Having very, very good records in the jungle. He is a very good player there. Tempest Keeper, you give him, he gets good fun. That's, just, that's as, as simple as that. And Keeper of the Forest, not going to be the Keeper of the Suicide this game. So, interesting to see that he is going to reprise his roots there as well. And on the help on team, we have Neolusion MR all the way from Thailand. And Thailand is a big country, but they came up on top of that. So, going to give them huge props to that. You have the Drafter there, and that's going to be Color X. He's going to draft for himself an Engineer, and that's a pretty respectable one. But it's cute to see that Bomb Rusher Paul is playing as the Witch Lane instead, not as the Engineer. So a little bit of a different strat happening from, our, from the MR side already. Next in line, we got Cheetah One X playing as the Pestilence, the bug that just cannot be killed by past, uh, parasites. It is a very big Pestilence, and definitely Cheetah One X mid lane. Very, very strong aggression there as well. You got the carry, and that's going to be DQ, or rather, better known as Do I Kill You, like Luck always says. And DQ is going to be playing as Wretched Hack, that's going to go carry full on. And Las Vinales, man, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, the warrior on a horseback. It's going to be the 070 v one and that will be the War Beast. And it's a pretty big War Beast, if you ask me, winning them both games yesterday. Uh, in general, he had pretty good farm. He went for Puzzle Box, a lot of push right as well. And this dual carry from, MR, from MRR is looking to be really so damn awesome that I think RNG Sports Let's might have a trouble on. in this game. But this is just game one and a lot of stuff happening here. So it's always too early to call it. And right now off the bat, I think that both teams going to go and uh, go to the Legion jungle a little bit because they, there is a jungle player on the Legion squad. But I'm just curious to see how MR is going to really lane this one up. I'm thinking that mid lane is going to be a pass lane and uh, engineer as well. Bottom lane, it will be a hack. There we go. Actually, I would definitely prefer if the war piece is there because hack. Yeah, we put hack here, but hack is just the kind of carry that you need. You know, needs a lot of farm. And maybe they were ex expecting a little bit of a strat change coming from Orange Spot, seeing as to how fluid the heroes on Orange Spots really are and the players also. So that's one of the main reasons why they put a hack here. A little bit more extra survival. Uh, base as compared to that of the key of the war beast war beast. Yeah, we can argue that he can pull the crypts But you have a lot of experienced veterans here on orange spots And you don't want to do that kind of a cheesy stuff so early in this game Knowing that you have limited amount of success with that. That's it. Hack's gonna be here safe hack um, Definitely flash of darkness is gonna be used as soon as he can and that's gonna make sure that at least the hack is gonna be fine That's it, man. Uh, pretty much a big game here, guys. So do spam the Twitch chat with what you think, or rather, which team you think is going to win. And in general, it should be a pretty big one that's going to happen there. Alright, just checking my settings, making sure everything's good to go. No ganks happening just yet. Waiting for the one minute mark here, but still, it's mid lane. It's gonna be DMOA, and that's a pretty good support there. Uh, 
glad to see Mr. Ghost not playing as the Glacius. You know, he just has such a fetish for Glacius that I do not explain as well. You just got Kiddo there playing as the Pandemonium, man. Pandemonium. And Ammo is gonna have a little bit of a good time up against the Pestance uh, Engineer combo. Definitely Lark would prefer the Pesty NG because uh, you've got pretty good ganking stuff happening there. So, but top lane, a lot of aggression already up on the Bubbles. Bubbles gonna get boxed out as soon as he can by the Witch Lair. Witch Lair. It's doing a lot of good work here against Bubbles. Bubbles very squishy because INT base as well. And Kiddo does have a very interesting build. Four Minor Totem going to that. Four Minor Totem is really awesome. And there goes the Griffiths. Done. Don't see how he can really pick up the kill there on the Bubbles. Bubbles should be okay. But also look at that, man. Captain America shield in the face of the Witch Slayer. You don't want to fight with Captain America. Not the Bubble version of this one. So it's a very, very big, big shield that he just threw in your face. We gotta be really careful there as well. A little bit there. So one minute's up already and down south we have WTF up against the DQ. It's gonna be the carry showdown here. Both level 2, pretty good stuff happening. I think WTF should be looking for a quick light brand. He needs the extra farm. And light brand, it's very good for a little bit of extra auto attacks coming out from the Dr. Repulsor. But you need to be really careful about that one there because it is a... It's still a farming item and Doctor, you need the Icon of Goddess. Icon of Goddess is just so strong on Dr. Repulsor. It allows a lot of zip in, zip out kind of action as well. Mana regeneration across the board there and really crazy to see that. That's it, mid lane, um, pretty much the lane is a little bit pushed out here for Team Legion and they want to be really careful about that one because that's going to limit the extra ganking effort coming up from the Keeper in the mid stage. But because they have a Keeper and not a secondary support, I think that the aggression is going to die down a little bit on Orange Spot side. And that's not going to be very good for Orange Spots. In general, the overwhelming success that they had is because of uh, the extra ganky effort from the dual support here. But not in this kind of situation because you have only one support and the main uh, keeper there is not going to be ganking. Show you this game going to be going into the jungle there. It's still going to be pretty good because it's going to give us good farm. And after all, many people will argue that you know the jungle is just another alternative road to getting extra money. And you want to milk on as much resources as you can. But you know, now that the meta game changes a little bit extra, you can tell that ganks give a lot of money as well. That's why it's uh, it's gonna be a pretty tough decision, and you have teams deciding different draft, different games. Since it's a best of five, but if, if you guys don't know it already, best of five means that you can lose one game, you can lose um, two games, but don't lose three. The moment you lose three games, you're gonna be out. So we're gonna be looking at uh, a pretty exciting first game. And winning the first game gives a lot extra morale. That's why most teams would rather lose the second game than the first game. First game, you know, it's always having a good start to the day it means a lot to many people. But that's it, there we go. You look at that, Better Cry already increasing a lot of damage here from most of his members, including Pestilence and that uh, engineer. Kex also gonna connect and pat him on him. A little bit of trouble. He can always cannonball out of this one. But is he gonna do that? I don't think so. Just gonna save it for the clutch moment in case there is a turnaround opportunity there. But that's a pattern. Look at that. Two levels in the flick, one level in the cannonball. That's gonna maximize a lot of extra slow on the flick there. And armor reduction as well. Taper 30 movement speed. That's one of the main reasons. Extra 10. Norris if it's really needed. Uh, whereas the cannonball stun this extra 75 damage. In general, uh, this one of the main reasons. There goes the flick. Where is the stun? The keg stun nicely saving back. Is it gonna be now? What a cannonball! This one just missed out completely. Kiddo, a little bit drunk so early, but can he land the last hit? That's the question. Mr. Ghost, Shaw Legs, he's gonna try and run. He cannot reach in time. And it's gonna be safe for Pestilence. Mr. Cheeto on X, you just got lucky, man. And look at that, Mr. Ghost on the flip side, not so ghosty after all. Completely spot out there. Also top lane, uh, double damage being snatched away by Bomber Chipotle. Pretty good stuff on MR side. It's all gonna be because of the cannonball miss. And Kido's gonna be like, oh damn. But here's the kind of player that definitely can come back here and uh, going back into this game. It's no problem at all, but better see a little bit of extra mistakes coming from him as soon as we can because, you know, you want to see the Pandemonium gang as much as possible. And that's in general, that's gonna be the case. So, so far so good, man. It's uh, pretty good stuff happening here all across the board. You have um, Retro Tech down south, level 5. You have Dr. Repulsor, WTF, also level 5. In terms of CS so far, you can tell that Doctor is about 18 and 9. Hack is about 19 and 5, so that is gonna be the case so far. Hack has an extra little bit of a extra, uh, well, advantage here because it's only a solo lane doctor. So, Hack's gonna not have the, you know, the normal suicide bane of being under level, but he is gonna be okay. Level 5, about 20 CS, pretty much tied up with WTF. 
You know, on the flip side, in terms of the carry route for Team Hellborn, you can argue that Warbiz might want to be the main carry this game. So 25 is to 5 for him. And Bubbles, man, Bubbles only 15 and 1, so Angular not doing that good a job as compared to that of 3Q and the Suicide. And you can't really compare because there is two members from the Hellborn team in the top lane as well. But you would definitely love to see that as extra resources come with that. But the good news is, the good news is, uh, we have to compare the secondary support. That would be the... Witch Slayer as well as the Keeper. Keeper, my good friend here in the jungle, Shrey is only 27 and 0 and 27 is a very good number for a jungle NC player. Whereas for the Witch Slayer, 8 and 3, which is why you have a little bit of extra money, like I mentioned before, coming in from the jungle, the woods, and killing off the neutrals, always a very good source of income. That said, the main crux of this debate is going to be in the mid lane where we look at Pandemonium up against our Pestilence and Pandemonium, man. It's just looking to be very dangerous right now. 19 and 2 farm and Pestilence 29 and 5. So MR really winning this lane really hard. And RNG Spots not having the best of moments already. Straight up in his early stages of this game already getting a little bit of box out here. But they should get back into this uh, game as much as they can. Put for a little bit extra gank. I guess that they're waiting for Keeper to hit 6. The moment he hits 6, maybe a gank is going to happen at mid lane. But look at that. We have Wretched Hack just roaming the woods. And this is why I say that Hack sometimes is the ugly... Fugly thing from the woods, but here comes a nice stun out to the MOA. Mr. Ghost on the trouble. This is gonna be the blood loss. Bomb rush triple. MR gonna call shocks fire here. And here comes Angela. There goes the Captain America shield knocking on to the kill. The kill goes down. It's a good kill in general. Can he get more? He wants more. Can he go in for the pestilence? I don't think so. Double stun's gonna name his game there. Straight a tattoo slow of the root, but still slow is better than nothing at all. Now looking for the kill engineer. Engineer gonna try run away. It's gonna be now cannonball. Misses again. What the hell? Kato's not on farm today. Kato gonna try run away, but can he do so? Graveyard stun is up. It's gonna try for it. It's gonna hit just nicely for a kill. Bomber Shapal again outdoing himself. MRR, Trace to one. They have a really good lead right now. RNG Spots, man. Kiddo with the stunts. Cannot have that happening, really. It is a mistake over and over. Twice already misses. You don't wanna see the kind of situation happen to RNG Spots. They made it's not good at all for chemistry. It's not good at all for anything, in fact. And he also died a second time. So, you know, maybe not a second time, but he also died there. And that's not good at all for RNG Spots. So rather than saying all that, I think we have a pretty good comfort in knowing that Hack died in that engagement. So Hack died is going to mean that uh, Dr. Paul says a little bit extra farm. Yeah, so he's going to be standing about 35 right now. And uh, GPM wise, Dr. Paul said 270, pretty decent. But Warbeast is just completely unregulated right now. And you want to regulate a Warbeast as soon as you can. That in general is really, really strong a hero at that. You don't want to give the lane to farm to. But look at that. Top lane already knocked off by a good friend. 07 TV1 there. And... It's in general a lot of extra excitement there from MRR side. And on the flip side, you got Ratchet Deck down south with the Witch Slayer. Both of them looking in to just kill this Dr. Repulse. The Doctor is not gonna be stupid. He's gonna nicely roam into the woods there. And take like a little bit extra support, but there is no lane ward of any sort here. So he may not know that there is a Witch Slayer in his vicinity. And I wanna pick a little bit extra aggression onto Duiku. That's why I gotta be really careful because there's already a silver bullet. Let me remind you guys. Silver bullet. He's like a truck. You don't want to face off that kind of situation. And maybe the stun's gonna happen soon. He's gonna have vision. Where's the stun? Graveyard stun. Nope, he's gonna reveal himself. Now he goes. And the silver bullet comes on. Down goes WTF. They want to make sure that they pick him up. There goes the bad blast as well. Not necessary. Yes, completely not needed. But at least they picked up the kill. And you know, the thing with doctors that he's already level 6 and 7 in fact. So he had the quick runaway getaway skills. But... Nope, not gonna run away today. WTF got completely addressed. Very good stuff happening all across the map here. Orange spots, man. I think they are a little bit concerned as to the current standing right now. But one is to four. We've seen a climb back in the games that are worse than this. So no troubles at all for them. But they need to make sure that they stop the mistakes right here, right now. So majority of the problem here is uh, the fact that mid is not having a best moment and the mid snowball is starting to hit bottom really hard and here comes the second wish there. Ooh, so close. Nearly landed a stun there, but look at that. WTF very, very uh, smart right now. He knows that there is a lot of extra stuff happening. But oh my god, straight as the water side here. No, the water of Rev, in fact, not gonna be good enough for him. He's gonna try to run away. Does he have a second route? I don't think so. WTF zips in, but he doesn't get anything done. The route goes down, and in fact, even the energy field is gonna be used as well. I think WTF is gonna be out of mana. He picks up one kill, but he's gonna have to die today. And that's gonna be a two for one kind of exchange. But here comes Bubbles. Bubbles goes in for Engineer, tying up the spot there. Bubbles up against a red check. It's just only about 50% health, and it's gonna be worth the wall. Two is to two kind of exchange, and orange spots by themselves a little bit of a nice tie. But yeah, I know it's another fun there. But look at this man, level eight Warbiz. You don't want to fight against Warbiz, and 07 TV1 doing a really good job here. 370 GPM any day, 
and he's gonna have a really good time farming here. And in general, it's just not good news at all. That's it, mid lane, level 7, Pandemonium. Pandemonium is uh, really crazy stuff happening here. He is uh, still a little bit over level as compared to that of the Pestilence. But Pandemonium needs to be really careful here. 200, only, only 200 plus GPM, not good at all. Cheetah Monarch's 275, a lot better than him. And that's uh, due to the credit that Kido did die in the early stage of this game. But we have, uh, we definitely need a little bit extra gank coming from Kido. Kido is the kind of player that normally doesn't gank a lot. Um, until he hits a substantial amount of level and that's uh, a little bit extra caution coming in for RNG spots he's definitely looking to play very safe right now and needs an extra water of sight here but you know, because Ray in this game is not playing to support Mr. Ghost is gonna have to bear the sole burden of having most of the wards uh, bought by himself which is okay, it's, be it's pretty comfortable doing that but the wards are still limited in supply and the only one being here and I don't see a second orange ward man so they are not gonna have that as well oh yep there we go, new one Ray just bought one and speaking about sharing the burden he's gonna have a little extra vision for the bottom lane and that's gonna help WTF a little bit because they know that you know he needs the farm as much as he can get So far so good guys, 3-6, uh, 4 key goalie for MR, MR looking very good in this game and uh, we have about just uh, 11 minutes, 30 seconds up here in this game, a uh, quick d ward there I think by ColorX, very good, ward of ref as well and that's gonna limit orange vision, orange is a team that you know just blocks out the vision of the opponent very quickly, that was a point in time I think in cycle 2 that Mr. Gross did a fantastic job in wards and just nearly won every single ward war but here in this kind of situation I don't think it's gonna be really that good that's it, some's gonna be used on Pandemonium and the gang's gonna happen real soon which layer gonna come from behind and that's not gonna be good oh the silver bullet being used already and there goes the impel and a keg as well that's gonna be easy kill bubbles goes in, Calfield used only on a pestilence the root also happening quickly but there goes the energy fill and that's gonna box up most of the member don't go in for line stun you don't Wanna go there? No, there goes the Babas! And it's gonna land a nice hit there as well. And now Keeper, no root to use at all. Bubbles uh, completely boxed out there. Kiddo is already dead. And we're looking at, uh, well, the Pestilence coming in to just pick up the kill on Keeper. Keeper is a lot of trouble now. Shay is gonna get boxed out. Shay is definitely going down. Let's take a look at MR. Man, a lot of extra aggression here in this game. And Warp is gonna be biting on Ankylo. Ankylo trouble is like, oh my god, there's a hell on behind me. This is a beast, man. Go try to run away. There goes the Master's Call. It's gonna save him a little bit, but not enough there, it seems. Ankylo is still gonna take the fall. And Warp is now gonna nicely try and pot away. Can he do so? And Moe is not gonna be interested again to the port so he is going to be fine and that's it it's a truth to 10 man orange spot goes steamroll really hard mr man they want to win one cycle they're screaming out real loud we need to win at least one cycle it's really about pride on the line right now it's not about the fact of uh, having the automated seated because uh, as in the automatic spot and the grand finals because both teams already won themselves that spot so it's not going to be the case and uh, it's more about the fact that i want to win a cycle man we want to show the world that MR can win one cycle at least, despite being the fact that we have been a player for like four times already. So they want to make sure that they can win at least one game of Orange Esports and maybe even possible win the entire cycle. But let me just tell you straight up the front that Orange Esports, this is not a standard draft that we see here. Uh, you don't have this kind of situation. Normally, Kido is going to be playing as the Bubbles and Ankylar is going to be playing as Suicide. And because this is the main reason why you don't go jungle on Orange Esports. Because Shrey, uh, yes, he does a very good job in the jungle role. But in general, it just slows down a lot of early game regression. It's not as effective as his dual support. One of the main reasons as to why it's um, a very, very sh different kind of situation there. That's it. Um, Dewat's going to be really successful on the part of Orange Esports. So they will Dewat away the Water of Wrath. But you gotta be really careful because the second one here, and you don't wanna have the exclusion. Oh my god, Kato got addressed again! Bomber Shapal goes in for an easy kill this time around. And in fact, four of uh, five of the members of MR are there, and it's uh, not, not a pleasant situation at all. That's it, WTF doesn't have much of an item, just hit only level 10, 500 gold in the bank. It's looking to be pretty poor, yes, uh, despite the fact that he. Needs the amount of money to buy a lot of extra stuff like a light brand for farm. I think the light brand, nope, got stolen away by DQ. DQ now has got light brand instead of him. And it's not gonna be good out of him. There goes the root, and it seems like the war beast. It's really a metamorphosis for him. He's gonna be okay. I think that. Oh, the zip in! Is it gonna be enough? Yes, the drive by! It's a big one from Ankiller there as well. A very good kill for Ankiller there, but it's still in general due to the credit of Dr. Repulsa. War beast was sad to go home. He's like, oh my god, I nearly caught the train, but. Here comes the big one, and um, at least Dr. Repulsor was quick to respond and just in time to reach there. If he missed out a slight moment there, it's gonna be it for him. But that's it, uh, Kido also took up the kill on Duke Q down south. That's gonna be the hack, and Orange is supposed to find himself a little bit extra space in this game. 
And meanwhile, Pestilence gonna try and put a little bit of gang, but it's gonna be a two-man stun from Rooster. There, easy silver so going out as well. There goes the Kek and Tarot as well. It seems like Doctor doesn't have the mana. Doctor gonna die. And not really sure what's happening here. There, they shouldn't have taken a fight without any water sight. It is not effective at all. But the good news is, uh, at least the bubbles uh, already have the ability to run away. And in general, majority of that previous gang's success is due to the fact that uh, Pestilence already has got the portal key. Pestilence with a portal key, man. It's something that Legion team didn't see coming, not at 50 mini mark, and it just hit them really hard in the face. A uh, very quick portal key from Pestilence just summarized a quick stun, and a wish clear just nicely tied in a secondary stun, and that in general caused more than enough wreck and damage on orange G-spots. So it's a pretty different kind of a game. The MR is playing and it's working really well. Look at that early game aggression, 10k goal lead. Now it's going to be in your own palm and hands. Do not throw this game away. By throwing away, I mean by overextending, by doing stupid stuff. Like uh, trying to gang but fail and lack of ward in the area. Yeah, you know, basic stuff that shouldn't happen. One of the good news is that on the Legion side, you have a lot of extra anti-push here. You have the MO Acid Bomb, you also have the Quick Bubble Shell Surf, both of which are very effective in terms of um, anti-pushing at anti-creep with maybe even more than that. But that's the amount of success that they could really have here in terms of anti-push. There we go! One wave gone, and it's uh, very effective to counter any form of aggressive push from the lanes and... You want to see that kind of stuff happen as soon as possible. They are going to be the main guardians of towers and defense here. Kings of defense. We have the Mr. Ghost, uh, MOA as well as the Bubbles. Being played by Ankiller, but that's the top lane. Uh, a little bit of the uh, increased aggression from the Ratchet Hack. And Shui is looking to just nicely push down the top lane by himself. Can he get it done? It's going to be a really tall order for him, but... If they remove Duikyu from this lane, it's going to be very possible. And the only way to remove him from this lane is that to have an extra gang across the map here. How can he have the across gang as it's going to be pretty questionable because... Well, one of the main trouble really is Kiddo in this game. Kiddo is not having the best of moments and he is just... I mean, he's doing a pretty alright job, but... It misses a lot of fun, but there you go, top lane, root already being used, it seems like Hack is gonna get a nice little kill as well, and he's gonna flash away, but I think it is not gonna be enough, yep, it's not gonna be enough for a kill, Hack is just nicely running away there, and Bubblesman already using the Song of the Sea a little too early, if you ask me, could have saved that for a little bit later, that's gonna be the thing that could kill Hack at the very end, but still, I think that they were more inclined to chase him now, and there we go, the moment Bubbles is all around, mid lane falls, and it's uh, basically that that the case doctor is going to be okay because you also can see the bottom lane tower as well and that's going to be that's going to be for mr in general now 14k gold lead already it's just 18 minutes in we might not be looking at a late game here meanwhile top lane gang's happening again nice little pot in by pasty it seems like i'm sure he's gonna try running maybe there's gonna be a god proc yes it's gonna be a god proc and down goes the keeper of the desert and show you man never saw it coming I was wondering why the hell is Chitamanex not attacking over and over again. Sometimes you're gonna wish for that 25% chance, man. The 25% chance always, always works. It is such an effective god proc that always cancels teleportation. It is just the way the game is. That's one of the main reasons why Pestilence is a lot more favored because of the extra god proc. You don't have to buy a Brutalizer for that kind of effect. And it's, uh, it's a physical stuff, so... It does cancel a lot of extra skills as well. But the bad news is that you gotta be up front to the guy, man. You gotta kiss the guy to basically stun him. So about 19 minutes up already, and we're looking at about 5 years to 15 here. 15k goal lead for the Hellbond team, looking to be pretty good. Legion Sight, uh, well, Kiddo only level 10. That's the bad news. He has the sole burden of carrying this game from the mid lane perspective, but I think that he's not having the best of moments as a, a polar bear here. Uh, maybe if it's a kangaroo, it's gonna be a little bit of a different story or a dragon, but he doesn't like polar bear, so it's uh, not good at all for him. He needs to get his stun, his cannonball, which deals a shit ton of damage. But if you look at that, but hold that top because bottom lane gang's gonna happen again. Doctor Repulsor, bad blast to the face, but because of a nice master's call, it's gonna be okay. But here comes the nice lock in and Duikyu got locked down. That's gonna be easy kill. Now they're gonna buy down a bomb rush Paul. This is what I meant by don't troll the game, and they just did there. And even energy field is gonna be used. I think it's a little bit unnecessary, but it's still better be safe than sorry. And so we have Color X nicely running away as well. I mean, don't throw the game, man. You can't kill the Dr. Repulsa at this stage anymore just with two members. You need a little bit more than that. And even the Bat Blast you saw with the Super Bowl as well, it is just not enough. 
you need at least one more extra gank from the pestilence to lock down the doctor a little bit more and land a little bit too or too to attack that's gonna be the name of that game there but that being said man this area in general is not an area you want to gank the doctor repulsor because it is one hell of an area that's so close to the goddamn tower and there we go the tower's just there man so you don't want to have a situation whereby you need to face off against the tower it's it's not a good situation to be in at all it's so close and the tower's up you have easy reinforcements coming in for energy spots that is just a real real disgusting situation to be in that's it 20 minutes up already 6 is to 5 uh 15 here and uh, sorry about 15k goal leader about 14k to be really exact uh, and we have a pretty tight game for energy spots if they manage to win themselves this game it's gonna really crush the morale of mrr because they thought uh, rather they know they can win this one but they threw it away and you don't want to have the kind of situation whereby you know you thought you could can win the game, but nope. There goes a nice Griffith stun on Shui. There goes also the Water of Wrath. Shui is gonna turn around it, but a quick miniaturization is gonna happen there. Shui, man, needs to be bailed out right there, but it's gonna go invisible and walks in the second Water of Wrath. Really unfortunate for him. Oh, actually, no, but a uh, third one's gonna be used as well. Wow, look at that amount of Water of Wrath to just pick up the kill. So maybe one dust is gonna be it enough, but this is just unwise investments. You don't put your money in three Water of Wrath. It's not right at all. But still, you know, no complaints there because of the kill. And Mino mid lane down goes the pasty. Good ganks from Orange Spots. They are still on this game and on point on target at least. And that's a little bit of a good news there. Um, not to mention the fact that they have the extra ability to just snowball nicely because Doctor. Man, Doctor in this game is actually saving a lot of extra gold here. So he's not going to go for the live brand route. I don't think so. He's going to save up for Icon of the Goddess straight up. I think that's going to be a little bit more extra viable. Conquer thing as to how played. they don't have the space to, you know, get extra fun for Dr. Repulsa and all the links are already being pushed in here. It's gonna give him a little bit of space to farm, yes, but it is still gonna be a tricky duty to farm with the light brand. So that's it, MR nicely securing Congo's token of life. And in general, that is a uh, pretty good news there for the Congor uh, hunting squad. And that's uh, MR, man, MR. Every single game, you see them going to Congor like a system. Very, very, uh, you know, nicely trained, routine. It's like you wake up at 6 a.m. every single morning. MR, yeah, they just take Congor every single time it's up. And, and this is the kind of uh, systematic progression you want from an experienced team. It's really good. But that's it, Keeper is going to nicely build out from the top lane. And it's going to be fine. Yep, Engineer has already got a push book, so that's gonna help in terms of initiation. Uh, also saving the teammates from most of these troubles. And it's gonna be really questionable as to whether they can really survive this game. But that's it, and killer good news is that he at least, uh, rather Cipher, has got a... He's just got a portal key, man. And I spoke to Cipher before. He said before that and killer is not his real IGN. Cipher is. So gonna call him Cipher permanently right now because uh, I think it's that case there. So that's it, 23 minutes up already, 7 is to 16 here, 14k goal lead for the Albon team. And uh, well, a lot of increased aggression still on MR side, but things is nicely slow, slowly starting to die down there. And that's also going to mean that, you know, you don't have the extra gang happening on Orange spot side. Orange man, they're going to try and pot to, I believe, home. There we go. And pushing down the bottom lane tier 1. In fact, they haven't really addressed any tier 1s yet. This is going to be the first one. Another flip side, mid lane defense, tower tier 2 is going to be addressed. They're going to trade this one, I think, because there's nothing they can really do right now in Orange spot. They want to avoid team fight. The thing is that they know they cannot take a team fight. They are severely under level and in terms of farm, very far behind. Also, Hellbond's got a token. If you lose a team fight right now, you're going to be giving them the entire game. So Orange spot's very smart, going to take the aggression a little bit differently and push out the separate side links. That's going to be a little bit extra you know, relative here. But MR is not going to give them the chance to cheese this away. They're going to try to push the mid lane. So what's going to work in RNG Spots Fever right now is that MR drags for reasons that uh, they don't they don't know themselves. Like, just drag on, you know, hesitate a little bit, don't push, a fake back, you know. 
rather than there. But MR, man, they learned from the lesson in the previous cycle that this is not how you deal with orangey spots. You're gonna deal with aggression with aggression. Fight fire with fire. And they're gonna knock on your main door, man. You're gonna have to come back to defend here. Or else your television, your price television, your price computer is gonna be under siege right there. You better defend it right here, right now. That's it. Action's gonna begin in the mid lane here. Tier 3 gonna be addressed quickly. Look at that. Dweeky will better cry. Nicely hammering on that. And nice double stun. Down goes the bubbles. Also, MOE lot of trouble. MOE takes the fall. And MR looking to win the game here. It's just nicely knocking on tier 3 already. Warbeast in Metamorphosis nicely biting on mini barracks, but there is no increased defense here. Bubbles goes in, nice aggressive silence. Also, there goes a the quick shell stuff and Kelfield being used as well. But Dr. Repulsa, Dr. Repulsa has got the shrunk of it, not a icon of goddess. That's gonna help him survive a little bit, but the god proc is just too much. He's gonna try to run away right now, but is it gonna be effective? That's the question. Warbeast goes down. Nice kiddo, finally showing us some work there. But that being said, down goes Shrey, and that's gonna be it. But Shrey, he doesn't have the root, so that's gonna be a slight amount of, uh, you know, okay there. But the main defense is to make sure that the mini breaks doesn't fall right now. They already won the top lane tier one, but that's not gonna be enough. They want to make sure that we win this mid lane defense here. And mid lane defense is gonna be won. Whoa, look at that kiddo, man. Cannonball. Nope. He knows he's not gonna hit, so he's not gonna try for that. So that's it. 9 to 20 mid lane successfully defended. RNG spots. Great gameplay by them. They sacrificed. Yes, they didn't go in as five. You know, they just went in as two by two because unfortunately enough, it seems like uh, Akira got dressed very early on and the silver bullet engagement by the witch there by bomber Chapel. really good there but a fake back though look at that nice mean transition again but a quick silence from uh Cipher is looking to nicely I'm disrupt this uh or rather uh, disrupt this entire engagement there but still we have kiddo going down and in the backup supply line trying to pick up the kill there on the witch the witch there goes down nice shell surf i think bubbles is going to be safe and Doiku better not pressure things too much here he's going to try and back away right here right now he does have a grimoire power that's the main reason why he hits so much but in general, it's still a successful defense, and there's no way that it could really turn it around. So, you know, trade a kiddo for a Witch Slayer. I think that that trade does favor MR a little bit, but still, you know that it's not the you know, most ideal of trades because they didn't have the melee barracks. That's the price pool, man. This, sir, and this thing here is the top price, but they just, you know, couldn't get it. One of the main reasons was the Metamorphosis was used a little bit too early on Warbeast and uh, I think he also popped the Shrunken too early. And that's why, you know, he just doesn't have the extra um, life to go in and beat on the melee barracks there. But melee barracks still standing, so that's going to be a little bit good news for Team Legion. So Dr. Repulsa opting for the Shrunken straight up, that's going to help him survive most of these team fights. He doesn't have a farming light brand, he doesn't have the Icon of Goddess, that's going to be okay because Icon of Goddess is going to help him with aggression, but defensive items, you need them, protective, and that's going to be the least thing that you need right now is aggression because you don't have the space to even put forth that kind of a gank. That's it, the train's still on schedule, mid lane MR gonna be here and Hack's gonna be here as well. Meanwhile, top lane Shrey is just in his own world there. Not gonna pop the engagement, but hold it up because there's a little bit extra engagement here. MOE takes the fall. A nice pump to the face there in case you don't know that's the face match by that pandemonium. But it seems like it's not gonna be a good defense this time around. Both melee and range gonna go down as well. And that in general is not gonna be good news at all. But here comes the extra aggression from the Pastlands. Pastlands making a lot of extra work. And there goes the Bad Blast and Bad Blast! It's gonna blast orange spots off the map there. Legion gonna call, gonna call it Conceit here. And they call it GG well played. This game is over. And MR is gonna be a yo, winner for game one. It's really a great game. MR, man, on point this entire game. They are just so good in this situation. And, you know, at least they win themselves an entire game here. And that's gonna mean that uh, they have a little bit extra standing going forward into the second game. And they just need to win two more. Uh, the bad news is the orange spots is one point but down, which is why. Uh, it's still okay, but you know, if you ask me my personal prediction, I still think the orangey spot has go ethics. I think that they need to drop the jungle role against MR because MR is such an aggressive team. We've seen this before. They they learn from their lessons, man. This is a team that constantly evolves. That is MR for you guys. No illusion, MR. They evolve. They know that previously. They ran passive and they lost orangey spots. You got to deal orangey spots the card that they deal best, and that's a you know the kind of a card that basically says if you want to play aggression you're gonna have to be even more aggressive than we are so that's how you play against them and you know having the jungle role is uh, not gonna help you in terms of aggression you want you want to have the dual support you want to see I'm um, sure you playing the pandemonium you want to see mid lane bubbles on kiddo you want to see also mr. ghost playing as the glacius and a little bit extra gang happening there for more energy sports that's one of the main recipe for success for energy sports but that's it the winner is MR and MR man 
Very good gameplay by them. They did a very good job in this entire game here. Still, to next game gonna be up real soon. So do stay tuned, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the cast. A little bit short, a game, a little bit extra exciting as well. And me here on a solo cast always don't have enough breath to, you know, cast. As a solo caster, it's it sucks, but Lark is not here with the insights. So that's it. He's gonna be back real soon. And I hope you guys enjoy the cast in general. If you do, don't forget to follow us. That's gonna help provide a little bit of extra resolution option. And if you do click follow, it's gonna help us provide the multi-resolution option to all the viewers out here in Southeast Asia that don't have the luxury of having a good computer. So that is uh, a pretty good stuff that we can offer and they will be able to have at least seamless connection. That's it, game two gonna be up real soon. And this is Babel. We hope you guys will stay tuned. So we'll be back right soon. Do stay tuned. See you.